final penultimately annually, sec- first annual. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use the convolve and residue functions in Python to allow us to perform partial fraction expansion. I'm going to work with an example I've completed in another video to help you see how this works. The function I am working with is g of s equals 2 divided by s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2 squared. This function has poles at minus 1, minus 2, and minus 2. Partial fraction expansion tells me that g of s can be decomposed into three separate fractions, all summed together, a over s plus 1, b over s plus 2 squared, and c over s plus 2. Rather than solving this out by hand, I'm going to make use of the residue command in Python to find r, the residues or values of a, b, and c, p, the poles, and k, which is called the direct term, which is zero if the fraction is strictly proper. That is, the order of the denominator is greater than the order of the numerator. In Python, the residue command comes from scipy, inside the package signal. Before I move on to implementing the residue command, I need to understand how to represent the numerator num and denominator din in Python as variables. It turns out that we can represent these polynomials by placing the coefficients in an array. We can use num pi.array for this very purpose. In this example, num equals 2 and den is s plus 1 times s plus 2 squared. For the numerator, the value 2 is a scalar, or an array with one value, where 2 is the coefficient of s to the 0th power. On the other hand, den is the product of s plus 1 and s plus 2 squared. s plus 1 can be represented as an array 1 comma 1, where the rightmost argument is the coefficient of s to the 0th power, and the leftmost is the coefficient of s to the 1st power. s plus 2 squared is the multiplication of two arrays, 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 2. So we come to the next question, which is how to combine these. We can do so using either the command convolve or the command polymole, which both come from NumPy. In a previous video, which you can click in the link above, I found the solution to this partial fraction expansion. The solution is g of s equals 2 over s plus 1 minus 2 over s plus 2 squared minus 2 over s plus 2. Let's see if we can use Python to verify this result. I'm working in PyCharm Professional Edition in scientific mode using the Python console. However, you could implement this in any Python IDE you choose. The first steps are to import the necessary packages. I'll import numpy as np, and I'll also import scipy.signal as sps. Next, I'll specify num as the scalar too. Then, I'll get to my denominator. I could have multiplied this out by hand, but I want to let Python do the heavy lifting for computations today. I'll use np.array to get each of my small arrays, and then I'm going to use np.polymol to combine these. I'll point out that polymol, short for polynomial multiplication, expects only two array-like objects as inputs, and it outputs a single array. This means that to combine more than two arrays, I'll have to nest polymol commands. At this point, it may be good to pause to make sure you can follow along with what I've typed. Next, I'll see what the result of this combination is. We get the array 1, 5, 8, 4. I would like to verify that the command np.convolve will also do the same thing. I'll show you that in this video as well. The command convolve also expects only two input arrays, so we will again have to nest the commands together. Once I've done that, you can see that we again get 1, 5, 8, 4. Okay, now that we have our numerator and denominator, it is time to use the residue command. The outputs, as previously described, are r, p, and k. I'll put those to the left of the equal sign, separated by commas. And on the right of the equal sign, I'll put sps.residue of num, comma, den. Okay, let's look at the results. Starting with r, Python returned that r is equal to negative 2, negative 2, and 2. These are really meaningless unless I can pair them with their corresponding poles. So, let's look at p. I see that the poles are negative 2, negative 2, and negative 1. So that tells me that both poles of negative 2 have a partial fraction expansion coefficient of negative 2, and the pole at negative 1 has a coefficient of 2. Lastly, in Python, I look at k, and I see that I get 0. This is what I expected because my fraction is strictly proper. Let's go back to the by hand results to check the answer. Here I can verify that g of s is equal to 2 over s plus 1, minus 2 over s plus 2 squared, minus 2 over s plus 2. And this matches what I found in Python.